canals are very interesting while in Amsterdam because it was part of their main transportation at one time. And to think that people traveled down canals on boats to get from one place to another was just fabulous. Yes, in the Smithsonian Institute, we, we saw the plane in which Charles Lindbergh flew over to Europe. I think he was uh, a sort of an adventurer and he liked the daring of the flying. In a, in a sense, you're not only touring England, but you're also meeting people of other countries and learning the things that they do in their countries. It makes it real interesting, you know, you can exchange views. We all crowded around the spacesuit. We all thought it was on a dummy. And then one of the girls was asked if she'd like to touch the glove of this dummy. And of course it came to life and we were all rather surprised at this. It, uh, it was all rather amusing. Well, um, you talk about building relationships with other uh, countries. I found that with my German friend who stayed with me for five days with my whole family, I would say he is my best friend that I've made on this trip together, and I've invited him to my house if he is in the Chicago area, and he in turn has invited me to his house if I should ever return to Germany again. This was the longest airplane trip we'd ever taken. You know, when they named it International Air Cadet Exchange, they weren't kidding. Cadets came from all over the world, crisscrossing oceans and continents, not just for pleasure, but on a mission of goodwill. Participating nations are naturally pretty choosy about who represents them overseas. For example, only top Civil Air Patrol cadets are selected based on their character, academic achievements, leadership ability, and good citizenship. But what brought us all together in the first place was our common interest in aerospace. Some of us in our Civil Air Patrol program had already had some training in aeronautics and space science. But this tour, well, I don't know, it, it kind of brought it all together. Air Force jets, prop jobs, a missile launch pad at Vandenberg. Some got to go inside a space capsule. Well, I missed out on that one. You know, when you talk about aviation, there's a little more to it than just flying airplanes. Haven't you ever wondered how they keep them from running into each other over the big city airports? Well, we saw how that's done, too. At an air traffic control center. Really interesting. A few lucky cadets got to visit the Air Force Academy at Colorado Springs. What a place. Red carpet treatment all the way. And to top it off, a cook-on in the woods near the academy. But sooner or later, it all gets back to this people-to-people -people thing again. Just natural, I guess. I think International Air Cadet Exchange, the value to me has been the opportunity to see a foreign country, to see people, to get to meet them, to know them to actually see what other people do and see how similar people are all over the world. Having gotten to meet British, Canadians, Swedish, Germans, plus the Dutch people, we've gotten a chance to know more people around the world. This to me has been just an opportunity which I'll treasure for my whole life. The International Academic Exchange's purpose is uh, to create friendship between different countries. And in our tour, I believe that we've really mastered uh, exactly what it was set up for, because uh, as this family, we, uh, we just spoke together and acted politely to each other, and just as one of the best things you can think of that a family should be. Well, we have everything prepared. We have our transportation, it's always there. And wherever we go, we'll have our meals all prepared and everything. And it's, it's really fantastic, and everything's just coming out great. One of the greatest things which I know my lads are getting out of this 
visit to your country is the ability to uh, converse with uh, the average American, uh, listen to their points of view, discuss uh, their problems, and uh, more than anything else, I think this tour has achieved the aim of understanding between two different nations. Uh, I can envisage a uh, difficulty with parties from the uh, Malaysian, Singapore, and uh, Chinese uh, groups uh, who would have a language difficulty. Uh, but nevertheless, as far as my lads are concerned, the number one thing which has come out of our visit is uh, getting to know the uh, American person in their own home. Uh, and they have said to me on many occasions, Sir, these people are exactly the same as us. There's only one difference, they've got an accent. Oh yeah, the language problems. It can be quite a problem for just a Puerto Rican who finds himself in Germany for three weeks. When I travel through the country and everything, here in Germany, I think of my parents and how I'd like to see them see what I've seen. And usually it's the other way around. They want you to see what they've seen. But Europe's one thing I'd really like them to see. It's really fabulous. I still can't believe I'm here. I look up at the sky and I say, the same sky that you see in the United States, but it's a long way away. Well, I think one thing which I hoped I showed in the way I acted, the way I behaved, the way my outward appearance to people in the Netherlands was to show them what not really a typical American is, but what a typical American who really wants to learn about them is. I changed a few ideas I know of because they would ask me questions about life in the United States and I gave them the honest answers, as honest as I could from my own experience. It made me think a lot about what America meant to me because I had to tell them what America was. And it was very interesting to note their reactions. I definitely see a lot of promotion of goodwill between the United States and other countries and between other countries in the United States where, well, kids from Belgium will ask, well, uh, you know, do you really have free press? We showed him a picture of something that said something about the war, and he was shocked because they said something about the war. He said, I can't believe that you, know, you have free press. And uh, you find out more about different other countries than you would in a book, you know. The kids can tell you more about what they are. I enjoyed my trip around New York greatly, especially the boat trip around Manhattan Island. I think this was the only way we could get any idea of the great size of the buildings. We have skyscrapers in England, especially in London, but nowhere on the scale of New York. They were really terrific. Never seen anything like that before. Well, in England, it was my second time up in gliders. The other times were in Illinois. It's just one you really can't describe it until you feel it. And, and then you still have difficulty describing it, but it's a, it's a feeling that you will get doing anything else. It's a thing of where you and Mother Nature come together and face each other face to face. I think, I think the most inspiring part of uh, RAF Spittlegate was standing there behind the glider as it was being towed up and just watching the glider collide into the clouds and uh, watching that thing just climb like no other bird or any other glider you've ever seen climb before. Uh, when I first walked into the uh, Smithsonian Institute, I first saw the, the plane the Wright brothers flew in, in 1903. What startled me most was that the Wright brothers plane, uh, it was almost like a mosquito. Uh, it's so, you know, open, and behind stood, stood the spirit of St. Louis, and it was covered with metal. And I, and all at once, I, I saw the difference was, was really, you know, astounding. But, but what was more astounding was the behind that the lunar module. Oh, the the difference there, you you could not measure, and not only in know-how and technological advancement, but also in the mentality of man to reach so much further beyond uh, almost imagination. I was a bit skeptical when I realized I'd be coming to the United States for my International Air Cadet Exchange this year, but uh, this trip has really extended my knowledge quite a lot. I don't think there was any problem 
uh, between the, all the cadets in uh, getting together, mainly because we're all teenagers, or around that area. And uh, I think all teenagers all over the world have uh, just about the same ideas, especially in organizations as our own. The uh, teenagers just, you know, sort of just blend in together with each other. Everyone is interested in everyone else uh, as human beings go, I feel. And it, it is up to the cadet, I believe, to use his tactfulness in explaining his country's way of life and the way his people are. If you don't tell it to them right, they're going to get a warped view of an American. I only wish we could stay in England longer with the group of people that we are with now, because uh, I don't think we'll ever stop learning about uh, the different ways and things uh, that uh, most of us do. I met not only the Dutch people, but also Germans, Swedish, Canadians, British, a chance which I haven't really had before, the chance to meet people, get to know them, and in turn form ideas about the countries. But in meeting the people I've grown, it's become more or less a personal relationship, so that the country means something to me because I now have a friend there. And friends around the world are very important to everyone. The first time I saw the United Nations building was from um, the boat when we circled around the Isle of Manhattan. And uh, it really impressed me. I found the United Nations architecturally, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It was a beautiful building. And inside, of course, uh, the way they uh, designed the interior, uh, allowing each country to participate, I thought this was wonderful. I really enjoyed having a Dutch guide there, one of our country, and she uh, could make clear in Dutch what uh, might have been not clear in English or American, uh, she prefer. What impressed me most about the German people was the friendliness, not only towards each other, but, but towards uh, foreigners. Just about every place we went, we were given a, actually a VIP treatment, and people went out of their way to be kind and courteous and help us in every way possible. When you live with your private host, you leave uh, this, this feeling of real binding friendship, that, that you've met somebody who understands you and you understand, you have a mutual understanding between each other, and you can see this, you know, happening. And you can feel where your diplomacy has come over and grasp them and theirs has grasped you in their own land. And when you leave, you kind of hate to leave them, you know, because you've just met these people, you've got new friends, you know, and they're really nice and you really like, they like you, you can feel it. As the United States is such a large country, you can even find contrasts in different states. And this I noticed particularly between New York and Florida, where New York is closely packed and rather hectic. Florida is open and more relaxed. And naturally enough, I prefer the Florida atmosphere. While in Florida, we visited Cape Kennedy, where they launched the moon rockets. Watching the Apollo launch uh, was quite something. On the countdown, we were all anticipating the launch, not knowing exactly what to expect. Then there was a bright orange flame. Being three miles away, we could feel the blast. And then a couple of seconds later, we heard this great roar. I've watched other Apollo launches on television at home before, and uh, they were quite exciting. America has the resources to be able to do this, and uh, I think it's a, it's a good idea, in a way, uh, that she should use these resources to try and find out as much as possible about the world we live in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the lunar roving vehicle which was used on the moon by the Apollo 15 astronauts. 
This vehicle weighs 462 pounds and is capable of carrying 1,000 pounds. The astronauts used it to travel about 30 miles all total on the lunar surface. They had the capability of traveling for 56 miles or 73 hours. While staying in the Waldorf Astoria in New York, we were uh, attended a military ball. This was the first ball I'd ever attended in formal dress. And I think it was the same for some of the other British girls. By the end of the evening, we'd all had a very, very nice time, very uh, jolly time. Uh, I've learned much more knowledge from talking to the other cadets than I could probably ever learn in the school books. These cadets can uh, discuss freely their problems and uh, the issues of their nation. When discussing with these cadets, it's really uh, unique to find out that their country has about the same problems as their country, and uh, the youth feel about the same way about uh, national problems and international problems as the U.S. cadets do. I think Civil Air Patrol has given me the opportunity to meet people, to meet people in a different situation. I found out a lot about myself and about others. And I think that's what CAP is aimed at, for everyone to learn. Well, personally, I felt that it was just a fantastic tour. I've learned a lot, learned how other people have lived, and it has changed me quite a bit. But when I go back home, I feel that I'll still be me, but I'll be a more knowledgeable me that knows more about somebody else in the world. I think the biggest quality that was established during our little crusade through the country is friendship. And to me, friendship is an awfully important quality in people. And through this trip, we were able to establish that people can get along with each other. And I think this is a quality that more people should experience. They call IACE person-to-person -person diplomacy. And I really can't, in my mind, think of any other better diplomacy in the world. There should be more of it, really. <laughs>